guys, it's Kelly. Welcome to the Simon Says Stamp, uh, my favorite release blog hop. Today I'm going to be using Cuddly Critters and Cuddly Critters accessories as well as their dies and the birthday wishes frame for my card. Um, these are also some stamps. This is a mini, or I'm sorry, some inks. <laughs> um, they're minis and that is the Spring Flowers collection. I just thought they were really fun, bright colors to use for a birthday card. Um, here I'm just laying the die down so I can um, kind of mark how far I need my ink to go out. And I'm just going to use uh, my Ranger um, ink blending tool. I'm going to kind of blot the ink off on my uh, Ranger craft mat and then just blend that on to where I need it. The um, Usually when you're ink blending, any like, uh, light or um, small little pencil marks that you make will wear away with the ink blending, so I don't even worry about it. <laughs> It's just a marker for me to know how far I need to go out. And then usually when I'm doing my um, ink blending, I like to do my first color, my second color, and then I'll go back in and do a little bit of my first just so I get a really good blend. Um, but you do, you know, whatever works for you, however much or how little you like. I usually like um, some bolder colors. So there's a lot about this release that I really love. There's a lot of really adorable um, images that came out. And these little cuddly critters just totally stole my heart. Like they're just like these chubby little adorable guys. You just want to hug them and squeeze them and love them. And I couldn't help but use them. So um, just picking out the colors. This is um, was a birthday card for a friend of mine who had a birthday coming up. And um, I just thought that they would be... You know, just fun, bright, happy. Who doesn't want a fun, bright, happy birthday card? And the accessories for the Cuddly Critters are super cute. There's like little party hats in there, balloons, a present. Um, so you could use that stamp set on its own to do a ton um, of cards without even ever having to add in the critters. The critters are just like an added bonus <laughs> to all of the, the cute little accessories that I think there's even a cupcake in there which I'm always a sucker for a good cupcake. Um, who doesn't like cupcakes, honestly? So this, uh, the melon is going to be my last color. And then um, I got a little heavy handed with the pink and the purple when I was doing this. So there's very little of the, um, what is, so there's a lot of wisteria, a lot of hollyhock, and very little of the melon and spring raid. That's just the way it ended up working out. So here I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. This is Copic Safe Ink, and I'm going to stamp these all out. I'm working on Nina, 110-pound um, cardstock, and then I die cut them before I color them. I don't normally die cut my stamps. Normally I'm a one-layer card person, or um, I'm working, you know, just with my own masks or fussy cutting. These are really nice. They fit right up against the stamped line, so they're super easy to line up even for somebody like me. But I cut them out before I colored them. This was probably a mistake on my part. It was a little hard to keep a hold of them while I wanted to color them. So I would definitely recommend coloring them before you cut them out. Not that you can't make it work. I did. I wasn't doing it again because, as you have all heard me say, I'm lazy and I'm cheap. So I wasn't wasting the paper to cut them out again or my time. Um, so it did end up working out, but it would have been much easier had I done it on a full sheet of paper. So here for the coloring of the balloon, just to give it some roundness, I'm adding shading to one side, but I'm leaving a little bit of a highlight on the outside um, where the light would like show through the back of it. And for my darkest color, I'm just adding just a line, just a line on the left-hand side. Um, and this just gives it, you know, a little bit of shape, um, you know, something fun to add so it's not just like flat color and then when I add my lightest color I'll add it all over everything so it just kind of blends out together and I picked these colors based on what I felt matched the um, spring rain ink color that I use the best and then for the heart I wanted to do the RVs this I didn't match as well I went with the RVs that I normally use and I didn't really pay too much attention to what color that hollyhock ink was and um, that ended up being a mistake <laughs> on my part. Um, not a, not, not a um, 
unfixable one, but a mistake nonetheless. So this I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm adding my shading to the left hand side so my highlight will be on the right and I'm not taking the darkest color all the way to the edge. I'm leaving that little bit of highlight um, you know, where the ink would refract and show it because you know, balloons are transparent most of the time. And then um, I got a little heavy handed with my darker colors, but that's okay because the RVs um, totally like eat each other. So if you go over a dark RV with a light RV, it really pushes back that color. That one did kind of bleed out on me a little bit, but I will fix it later and I'll show you that when we get there. Here I wanted the doggy. Um, he's just so cute. I love his little folded over ears. He's totally adorable. Um, I wanted him to be black and white. So I'm going to give him one black ear, um, a little spot around his eye, and um, the rest of him is, um, oh, I colored his tail black. So we're doing that all with the same markers. We're starting with C1. That's going to be, um, you know, the shading for not just the base of the black, but also the white. When you're coloring anything that's white, you're only adding in the areas that are going to be the darkest. Um, so make sure that you do leave bits of actual white on your image. That's important if you want to project an image to appear white. For the um, black portions of it, I'm going ahead and I'm covering up the C1 with the C3. And then this is also going to be my darkest shading for any of my white areas. Um, you don't have to be afraid, to, I guess, to add too much shadow with a white image as long as you're leaving enough of a highlight for it to appear white. But it gets a little trickier when you're doing an image that is black and white uh, because you don't want it to appear to look, I just you don't want it to look exactly the same as what your black is going to look. So I'm building up those black areas for the spot on his um, eye and then also his ear. I'm leaving some of the C3, but I'm going pretty heavy with the C5. The C7 there'll be even less of, and then the C9 will be um, just a quick little outline around his eye and a line across the top of his ear. So the that's my darkest color, and it's going to be a very minimal amount that I'm going to use, but you need that little bit of depth to um, really give it that black look, even though we're using all grays. And then I'm just working back out from my darkest color to my lightest colors, uh, so I get a good blend, and it's something that I am happy with. I didn't even, I was pretty much done with the white portions of it. Um, just outside of a little bit of blending back with the uh, with the C1 so I didn't really have any harsh lines. The last thing that I'm going to do with this cute little puppy dog is add a little bit of pink and I picked the lightest pink I used in the balloon just so everything was cohesive um, to his paws, the little pads on his paws and underneath his ears. So here's everything kind of like all laid out and this is when I realized that pink was too hot pink. So I just took a um, RV63, which has a little bit more purple in it. The Hollyhock has a little bit more purple in it. And I just went over the whole balloon, and then I was much happier with the way that that matched. There's me, like, thinking it over <laughs> to make sure that everything kind of matches up. And this is where it really bled out on me because I had to put that ink over top of the rest of the ink. So I'm just taking my white gel pen and fixing up those edges. I'll let it dry, and nobody will ever know that it bled out. Um, RVs are very difficult to get up with the zero marker. Um, they just tend to bleed like crazy. I'm going to adhere this die cut down flat um, using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I'm adhering at an angle just for some interest. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and add the um, balloons and the dog, but I'm going to adhere those with the um, Scotch foam tape. So here I'm just laying this out. And I put a little bit of the time amount of multi glue on the back of my dog, and I'm laying them down um, so that it picks up the balloon where I want it to. And they're just because the pink uh, balloon was laying underneath the teal one, there wasn't enough stickiness for it to really get a good hold. So I ended up having to put just adhesive on the back to get it to do what I wanted it to do. And then I'm going to add that Scotch foam tape, and I just trimmed it. Um, you know, to whatever size I needed it to be. I adhered the balloons together as if they were one piece. It'll help keep them together when they're actually on the card. And so we're going to go ahead and peel off the, the sticky tape if I can keep a hold of that thing. 
and it put that down. Now, after I did this, I decided I wanted to stamp the um, little for you, okay, birthday wishes for you. This can get a little tricky um, when you've already adhered something with foam tape. So I made sure that before I inked it up, that I was going to be able to press down the entire stamp. So just be aware of that. Um, sometimes it can get in the way. After I did all of this, this my card was supposed to be done. <laughs> but it felt a little flat. So you know me, when something feels flat, I add a shadow. <laughs> um, this is a little tricky because it's a white die cut. And if you bump up against the sides of it with a marker, it's going to immediately absorb into that white die cut. So my first um, layer of shadow, I'm being really, really um, delicate, totally treating it with kid gloves because I want to make sure that I'm not going to bump the sides. Um, sometimes I was successful and sometimes I wasn't, but I figured out that I could fix it later, so it's cool. Um, I did the uh, C5 and then I blended it out with the C3. And just doing the same thing that I always do, uh, bottom left-hand side drop shadow and um, that's just the shadow look that I prefer. Um, I wish that I had done it before I had adhered the puppy and the balloon but I didn't and well we all have to live with our decisions. So I blended that out with the C1 and then here I'm just going around it with um, my journaling pen to really get a solid shadow in there that I don't have to worry about rubbing up against the sides. Once I was all done with that, I went back in with the um, colorless blender. Like the gray got a little high there. It didn't make sense for a shadow to be all the way up. And then I just really lightly touched it to the areas where the gray had um, bled into the paper. And that picked it up really nicely. Um, it wasn't anything that was too noticeable. I'm using this um, clear spectrum sparkle brush. Uh, this was given to me by a friend, and I'm already in love with it. <laughs> it's super sparkly. It's way more silver than the uh, Wink Costello, so I think they'll both have their purpose in my collection. Um, but it's a fun new toy, so I'm trying that out a lot. And then I'm just going to cover the balloons with some glossy accents to make them shiny, a little bit three-dimensional. And once that's done, um, I'm going to set that aside to dry. And that is pretty much the card. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please head over to my blog and join the hop because Simon will be giving away prizes on every stop on the hop. And um, thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.